Hi guys and welcome back to Robbie's English Harmony video blog. In this video I'm going to respond to Arzin's comment. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. If I didn't, I'm sorry about that, but I'm trying my best Arzin, right? That's what it says there. So thanks Arzin for posting the comment and uh, Arzin here is asking a question and let me read it out for you first. Then I'm going to proceed to answering the question. So. Uh, I've been in an English country for four years. So basically, Arzin lived in an English-speaking country for four years. So I could speak English very well. And then I uh, backed to my homeland. Uh, I guess he means that he went back to his homeland. And so since one year ago, I'm living uh, in my homeland. But because here is no one to talk with, and no one speaks English here, so I feel that I'm forgetting things. Please tell me what to do. Let me tell you right off the bat, it's, it's, it's just natural. You forget things in English simply because you don't use the language and it's totally natural. Th there's a saying which goes along uh, the following lines, if you don't use it, you lose it. And it, uh, it can be applicable to pretty much any aspect of your life, starting from, say, something very physical so, such as working out basically if you stop working out for a while you will lose you will lose your muscle size you will lose your stamina endurance everything everything is going to go downhill just because you're not you're, you're not working your muscles you're not working your body and same goes with everything in life the moment you stop being engaged in a particular activity on an ongoing basis, your ability, your skill starts dwindling, right? And obviously, uh, if you've been doing that particular thing for a long period of time, you will never completely forget it, but it will definitely take you some time to get back to the same uh, level of performance where you were before when you start engaging in that particular activity again after a prolonged period of time. So. If you went back to the English-speaking country where you lived for four years, it would take you probably a month or two to get back to the same fluency level, but uh, you will get back to it much, much faster, obviously, than someone who'd never achieved that fluency level in the first place, right? It's, it's only natural that those things, if you, even if you forget them, they kind of stay dormant in your brain. And uh, here's exactly what I mean by that. I'm going to bring up an example from, from my own life, from my own experience basically. But first of all, allow me to take a sip of water because I'm very thirsty. And this whole video recording thing is a very thirsty business to say the least. Now, uh, you're saying actually further in your comment that I speak uh, three languages fluently, which is the case, yes third language apart from my native which is Latvian and English is the Russian language right but here's the thing I haven't been using the Russian language for years well I would be uh, more precise in saying that I hadn't been using the Russian language up until recently when I started speaking with uh, a guy in my class in the college who happens to be Russian right I'm not Russian I'm Latvian but I, I speak Russian that's my second language and uh, I've been speaking with him for a while. And here's the thing, the thing. When I started speaking with him initially, I just couldn't speak normally. I was getting stuck for words the whole time, which is pretty much the same as the typical English fluency issue, right? Which is why I created the English Army blog in the first place, right? And then after a while, it took me a couple of weeks to get back to the level where I was years ago. And it's surprising how those words just surfaced up in my mind. Just like that, they just came up by themselves. I was speaking with him and all of a sudden all these words would come out of my mouth out of nowhere, you know? And the funny thing is, a couple of days prior to that, if someone asked me what that particular thing is called in Russian, I wouldn't be able to provide an immediate answer because... Uh, those things just get forgotten, just like you 
uh, Arzim pointed out in your comment, yes, you forget things and that's natural. But what I'm saying is once you learned all that stuff, it takes you just a little bit of practice to bring all that stuff back. And that's exactly what happened to me. And now, after a good few weeks of speaking with that particular person in Russian, my Russian is uh, its not really on a par with my English skills, because I've been speaking in English for years now, so my Russian is still a bit rusty, but uh, I would say that my fluency in Russian has returned back to levels that I had a few years ago, you know? So uh, that's the thing, my friend. You forget things, but provided that you... You don't wait your entire lifetime to regain the skill, right? Those things will never truly be forgotten. You know, you will, will, you will never forget that language for good. Unless, just like I said, you would be, you would stop speaking that language and then don't do it for decades. And then when you're 60 or 70 only, then try and rekindle that language in your brain. That probably wouldn't work because we've all heard stories of people who have stopped speaking their native languages at an early stages of their life when they're in their teens or 20s and then moved to different countries and married into uh, other families who speak other languages and they would obviously speak that language for the rest of their lives and then eventually they just forget their native language because they wouldn't be using it for the rest of their lives but that's extreme what i'm talking about here is if you don't speak if you don't use the language for a number of years you don't really lose it it, it stays dormant and then it takes you a few months a few weeks a few months to build that skill back but you will definitely regain it right and then let's move on to the second part of your question Oh no, the first part. Please tell me what to do. The solution is actually staring right in your face. What I'm doing now? I'm doing self-practice. I'm speaking in front of the camera, so there's, there's nobody really who would be listening to me right now. And uh, basically that's what I'm doing every day of the week. I'm not necessarily recording videos every day, but whenever I can, whenever I'm on my own, basically when I'm driving in the car, when I commute to the college in the morning and the evening coming back, I would constantly speak with myself. I would be planning the day ahead, remembering the previous day's events, and uh, there's always something going on in your head that you can verbalize out loud. And that's the spoken English practice I'm talking about. This particular video is uh, it's a very focused spoken English practice because I'm responding to a particular comment, right? So I'm talking about the specific thing. But generally, as I go about my daily business, I would just be voicing out my thoughts aloud just because there's nobody to practice my English with. But that's how I maintain a high level of fluency. And if you live in a country where there's no opportunities for you to practice your English, that is the only thing you can do. You know, there's a lot of people who do that because I've been going on about this concept in my videos for for a number of years and I've uh, had people contacting me, telling me that it works for them. And if, if, if it works for me, works for my audience, there's no reason why it wouldn't be working for you, Arzin, right? You just have to start doing that. And uh, the second part of the question is... Uh, once I read that you know three languages fluently, how don't you mix them or forget them? I need that technique. Well, the, the, there is no specific technique of how not to mix them once you've learned them. It's, it's, it's rather how to learn them in the first place. So basically, you, you don't learn a new language by way of using another language as the intermediary, you know? I would, that would happen to a certain degree, obviously, when you acquire the basics of the new language, you would have to translate, but for, for as long as you, you can understand basic concepts, that's when you can actually do away with your native language or whichever other language you use to learn the third language, for instance. That's when you can start using only that language to learn new concepts because 
you can always explain a new word using existing words that you know in that language and so on and so forth. So that is the pretty much the only way you can create a specific compartment in your brain for the other language, for the new language you're acquiring without running the risk of getting mixed up with another language simply because you're not using another language to translate to and from the new language, if you know what I mean. So basically, the, the, the trick is not to use another language to learn the new one. If you learn the new language as a language on its own, in its own compartment, there will be no risk of mixing it up with another language. But uh, this is something that I've been uh, talking about on my blog as well. Years ago, when I was improving my English, I was doing the wrong thing. I would learn new English vocabulary words using Latvian, right? So I would translate everything in Latvian, and then I would learn the new lang new vocabulary words uh, through the Latvian translations, and I would constantly be mixing up English and Latvian in my head, and that's exactly what was happening. But ever since I stopped doing that, Ever since I'm learning all new English concepts through the English language, this problem has disappeared. It took me a while to get rid of that particular issue, and it was very, very bad in the very beginning. But now I've dealt with it, and uh, just like I told you, basically stop translating, and that's when you're not going to be mixing up the languages. And uh, how, how I don't forget them? Well, it's all a matter of practicing. Just like I told you, I'd uh, forgotten a lot of Russian, but I just had to start speaking it again and everything just comes back for as long as you're not spending too much away from the language, so to speak. Unless it's decades, then you actually run the risk of probably forgetting the language for good. So, I hope that uh, you're going to enjoy watching this video, Arzen. Thanks for commenting on my blog and uh, I will be looking forward to more comments from you in the future. And uh, on the finishing note, just let me wish you all, my dear friends, a very happy Christmas. And uh, it's another week till New Year, so I'm not going to be saying Happy New Year because I'm definitely going to post another video on the New Year's Eve, hopefully, or the day before that. So. Uh, Happy Christmas, my friends, and uh, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, even if it's not your tradition, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm just sending you out all the best wishes, be nice to each other, love each other, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much what we need. All we need is love. Isn't that right, my friends? All right, thanks for watching this video, and chat to you soon. Bye-bye.